Hello, and thanks for checking in for Golf Smarter Mulligans number seven. I'm Fred Green. This week, we speak to Jim DeLobby, PGA, of jimdelobby.com. Now, we've talked about the mental game many times on Golf Smarter, but in this conversation, we talk about getting in the zone, the super zone, and the no zone, and how all three may be impacted by that hot dog you're having at the turn. Golf Smarter Mulligans is supported by two guys with golfballs.com, offering premium used golf balls at a fraction of the cost of new ones. Buying golf balls is a necessary but frustrating part of the game. Frustrating because you spend good money for something that you know you're going to lose. But like buying a used car, owning used golf balls reduces the frustration because you know you're going to lose them. That's why you may want to consider playing the premium quality used balls you can buy at twoguyswithgolfballs.com. The balls you purchase from them have been hand-inspected, sanitized, and graded for quality. So even though they're used, you have a pretty good idea of what you're buying. Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans listeners get an additional 10% off every order every time with a checkout code GOLFSMARTER. That's two guys with golfballs.com. Discount offer expires April 1, 2020. Mulligans is also brought to you by Autoslash.com. Autoslash.com is the rental car booking hack that will save you time, hassle, and money. Autoslash applies every available coupon code to your next car rental, including coupons you're eligible for based on your various memberships. Then, Autoslash tracks your reservation until the day you pick up the car and they email you when they find a better rate and they sometimes they'll email you daily. The average user saves 30% off from any other booking site. And autoslash.com is completely free. So bookmark it now on your browser and use it for your next car rental so that you can get the best possible rate from the completely free autoslash.com. Now let's get to Jim DeLobby, PGA. Jim, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. As an instructor, when you and I have spoken in the past, you talk about the brain and how it can impact your golf game. Sure. Obviously, we've talked many times uh, with other instructors and, and how your brain gets in your way. How can you make your brain a positive thing on the golf course? Well, I... I... At first, I think you just need to understand um, and look at it a different way. Uh, rather than calling it a brain, uh, I like to call it a computer. Okay. Uh, highly designed uh, with storage capacity. I, from the latest data, a million years, if you could breathe that long, neurons to be able to store every second through your five senses for a million years. I believe that. And so, if you could breathe that long, obviously, but... So it's really uh, a fantastic, uh, basically a machine that you can have usage to if you understand it. Obviously, that was your question. How do we get a better understanding? Well, I think first, if you call it a computer, it, and it does things um, without your knowledge, does a lot of things automatically throughout your whole body and and movement and motion, especially motion, uh, but you got to input it. So uh, if, you, if we treat it like a computer and talk about it like a computer, it has a storage area uh, called neurons that can store for a million years, so that you can call those libraries if you want. And they're storing all the time. They have, uh, you know, like I said, lots of capacity And <clears throat> in my model. And um, they store every second through the five senses, and they store everything. So it also has defaults. And I think that's where the golfers get confused, is we don't recognize that it, it stores your default bad swings, bad uh, mechanics, and it doesn't go away. So some theories you, say, some theories, and I, I talk a lot, I read a lot, I try to at least, and some theories say that it erases uh, material. Um, uh, I'm going to tell you, good news, bad news. I don't think it erases. I think it keeps it. I think the million-year storage thing is correct because what I see a lot of, I see it on the tour, the whole thing. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a tour player or you, Fred, or me. Uh, when we're tired, 
the computer will play low energy videotapes or low energy software programs because why because your tires are going to play a low energy and low energy usually is a deceleration why because it's easier to play for the brain it's a computer it wants to play things out so it doesn't waste a lot of energy and get you sick goes back to the super zone so tell and, me how uh, this hurts us uh, on the golf course well if um if if you go back to um uh let's say you're playing uh let's say you're uh playing good and all of a sudden uh slow play you get held up and um you wait there you wait there you wait there you get tired your blood flow changes your spinal fluid changes and you sit there and wait for about five minutes that's all it takes and you're in the original state you started before you warmed up in the morning and so now you're tired again and the first swing without warming up if you hit a shot because now it's your turn to hit after five minutes um, the brain's tired it's going to play a slow moving software program if you will and you'll probably swing like you don't want to swing and thus you will hit a bad shot and it's <laughs> and basically it's uh, just playing out a low uh, energy software program for your golf swing because you're in a low energy state. You haven't pumped yourself up. You're not warmed up. You just get up and try to go after five minutes. But I think a more important situation is when you're standing on the tee all day, you've been hitting it good, and all of a sudden you go, you see this OB stake on the right, and you go, or water, or bunker, you go, don't go OB, don't go OB. Now we're really going to learn about the brain. That's not a word. That, the, the brain doesn't, um, especially with people with eyes, it doesn't hear you say, don't go. It sees an OB stake in your imagination. It's the imagination that controls the computer, okay? The imagination, if you would, is like a television set to the, com- to the inner eyeballs of your computer. And the inner eyeballs of your computer, and I hope someday I can see them, and once the experts figure out what they look like, I want to see them, because they exist. When the inner eyeballs, the eyeballs of the computer, look at your television set, your imagination, and it sees an OB stake, the computer's job is to obey that visual command. It did not hear you say, don't go, don't go. It didn't hear the words, don't go. Because most of the data stored on those neurons is visual for a person with eyeballs. 80% they say, the experts say. I believe it. So it sees the picture OB stake. It doesn't hear the words, don't go. And guess what it does? It plays the program. It goes looking for a neuron labeled with an OB stake on it. It pulls it out, sticks it in the hard drive, and you hit an OB right at it. And there's the greatest example of this brain and how it acts like a computer and how it goes to default programs like OB stakes. If you're behind water and you say, don't go in the water, don't go in the water, you should have said, really, if you want to be funny about this, you should have said, don't go in the hole. (laughs) Don't go on the green. It would have been a picture, and I'm just being facetious here. It would have been a picture of you. It would have been a picture of going in the hole, and the brain would have gone into its library to locate that program if if it exists. It would have played it out. I'm being really facetious here, but that's really what's going on inside your brain. It's continually, the inner eyeballs of your computer is continually looking for visual pictures that you give it when you're consciously thinking about things in your television set, which is the imagination area of your, uh, and that you control. So um, I created a thing called Target Golf. You've heard of Target because you're into targets with your program. And I try to eventually get my players who have the ability to get their mind on the target during their entire swing and to stop talking internally and to get it on pictures to try to pull up those software programs, okay, to try to put them in the hard drive. If they exist, if they've done them already, they will come out. Okay, so now we're getting someplace here. I'm still waiting. So I I understand that in, in your head you're saying... The water, the water, the water, and that's where you're gonna. That's where you're headed. Right. But give me something. Tell me how to avoid that. Okay. And I guess uh, you know I'm really interested. What is Target Golf, and how do we uh, incorporate that? 
You've heard targeting a lot. Um, you've heard acquiring the target maybe once or twice. And it's out there, but here's my drill on it. Uh, what you need to do is start out at about <clears throat> one foot away from the hole. Okay? This is a real practical drill. It's quick. And you um, go ahead and set up to your putt one foot away. Maybe take some practice strokes. Get your one foot stroke going. Uh, address the ball. Look at the hole. And, and here's a cool thing. Notice that there, each hole has a signature. I don't know if you knew that, but they have little cuts that the superintendent or the workers have accidentally made in the uh, cup liner or there's a little uh, dry spot on the dirt above it there's always a little nick okay so i call it a signature because you want to get your mind on that signature not the entire hole Wait, uh, help me identify that again i've never heard that before i know because i <laughs> it's my world okay so how do you identify the signature so what happens is you go and you look you're up one foot away you look, and this gets rid of yips, by the way, too. You, you go up, you set up over the ball, and you look at the hole, and you identify a distinguishing mark on, the, on the, either the cup liner. Um, I can see them right now. There might be little turquoise marks from fertilizer. There could be little nicks in the cup liner. The cup itself looks like an uh, apple cutter. That was a lady gave that to me about five years ago. It looks like an apple cutter. So you can imagine an apple cutter while you're swinging. You can look down at the dirt, and usually on the dirt, there's a little identifying mark, maybe a dry spot or two, and you try to imagine those things. Okay, you try to uh, look at it, memorize it, look back at the ball, close your eyes, yeah, close your eyes, and start to imagine that uh, little signature, that little nick on the hole or the cup liner or the, or the uh, actual dirt. And while you're thinking about it, while you're daydreaming, on that little nick, that little, I call it a signature, okay? Because each hole has a different nick, a little cut. And while you're swinging, you think about that little nick, and your brain will knock the ball into the hole, not you. You will not have anything to do with it, okay? The brain will swing the golf club. You swing the golf club and start thinking about that nick, and the ball will go in the hole, all right? Well, That's you're also you. one foot away. Yes, I agree. I have guys that play whole rounds out this way, blind, just to prove it out. You don't have to, but I'm just letting you know that it works. And the blind play this game great because they use sound waves, okay? Because they can hear where the bottom of the club is. Oh, you, you literally mean blind. You're blind. To, to understand target golf, you have to go blind. Because your eyeballs, when they're open, too much stimulation at the beginning. Um... Right now, with your eyes open, Fred, imagine your greatest shot ever. Can you? Can you go back in time and find the greatest shot you ever hit? Yes. Okay, so that's with your eyes open, you're able to go into your imagination. Okay. But when you're over a one-foot putt or a 100-yard shot or a drive, and you're trying to think about, trying to imagine this target that's way down there or one foot away, so it's very difficult to use your imagination when you're over the ball, looking at the ball, and you probably got your mind on lots of things. The grip today, you know, you told me about your grip that you're working on. There's no way you can think about the target. Let's back up a second. Um, you play catch, you're looking at somebody, right? Yep. Well, you're, you don't even know how you're throwing anymore, right? You don't even think about how far back you're taking it, when you release it, when your body moves. You have no clue. You don't even care, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've got a target in front of you. You've loaded everything in your brain to throw that ball is loaded on pictures, on neurons, pictures of people that you've been throwing to for years. And it replays the program while you're looking at them. Now, here's the problem in golf. At 20 feet, your peripheral vision, which is used by your computer, by the way, you have to artificially tell the brain where the target is. So you have to imagine where that target is to let the brain throw the ball. It'd be like you playing catch and looking down at the ground trying to throw it to somebody. Okay? It'd be hard to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the way you would do it is you would look down at the ground and look up, imagine, memorize where your friend is, look back down at the ground and throw it to him while you're thinking about him. That's the only way you could throw the ball to him perfectly. Or you could close your eyes, imagine where he is, and throw it to him. Okay? That's what target golf is all about it's at outside of 20 you lose the target with your peripheral vision and now you must artificially 
supply the target to your computer. It doesn't know where he is anymore. So when you're swinging the golf club, rather than thinking about, guy, i got to take the club back here, i got to you know, move my lower body, I've got to do all these things, I'm telling you, you want to be thinking, you only want to be imagining where that flag is or where that uh, fairway is. You only want to be imagining it while you're swinging. Eventually, ultimately, don't you want to just be thinking about where the targets are? In your system when you videotape golf courses, isn't that the whole goal, targets? Yeah, it's hyper focus, right? Yeah, so yours is hi- that's hyper focus. All I'm saying is you have the ability to look out from the tee box or from one foot away and memorize what that target area looks like. Okay. okay? Do you not have that ability? Look- yeah, and, and I, I get the sense that, like, when you hear um, a basketball player or a baseball player after they're interviewed at, at, at a crucial moment and they. You know, they perform at a level way beyond everybody else. And they say, everything was in slow motion. I couldn't hear the crowd. All these things. So you're, it really is a hyper-focus here. You're just completely in that zone, right? Right. Oh, exactly. The zone. Yeah, and the zone is is that you don't worry about your mechanics anymore. you got super zone energy called serotonin flowing in you. And um, your brain plays the t- uh, software programs that are on the neurons. And plays them really well, actually. And only in that super zone state do you get to that place where you can concentrate solely on the target. Let's take a short break right here. We'll come back and let's go into more depth with the zone, the super zone, and the no zone. Okay. Again, here's your host for Golf Smarter, Fred Green. All right, we're back with Jim DeLobby of the Jim DeLobby Golf Schools on the central coast of California. And there's four schools. Uh, you can also get more information at www.jimdelobby.com. DeLobby is D-E-L-A-B-Y. Tell me what you mean by the zone and the super zone and the no zone. Um, I just uh, felt that for the average player that the zone seemed um, unattainable. Um, by um, the way we've described it to them. Mm-hmm. So, or even if they hit it, they didn't recognize they it. They didn't recognize it. So I kind of hyper-focused it, and in my model I call uh, the super zone, the state, it doesn't matter who you are and what you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's baseball or basketball or golf or ping pong or you're having a great day uh, and you feel great. Uh, I call the super zone that state where you do not um, have to worry about your mechanics in anything you're doing. It's automatic, and uh, things are great at the moment. And that could be a a great shot, uh, five shots in a row, a whole round of golf, two rounds in a row, great rounds. Um, But usually it really shows itself as we get older in great shots, great moments. So the super zone is when um, you're at a high, your highest energy state, and I, in my model, it's serotonin flowing at high levels. You have high levels of serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, and you can do no wrong. And um, the no zone, and I, so I redefined it just so it, it, it makes sense. And the no zone, <laughs> probably first to me, and the no zone is the state at where you can do nothing right. You have no energy. Uh, your brain, which is a computer, is playing low-energy default tapes, software programs, <clears throat> and um, you're hooking, slicing, top and chunking. And every golfer can relate to this. And every basketball can relate to it, and every baseball player, and everybody, because every day you have bad... I mean, there's days when you have bad days. You just don't feel good. So um, you have low-energy days, and you have high-energy days. You have high-energy shots, you have low-energy shots. And then the zone is you performing <clears throat> your skill um, that you have in your um, stored in your brain at a normal level with normal energy. Uh, so uh, a toe shot down the middle would be the zone. Where it goes down the middle, you don't know why, it, you towed it for some reason at impact, and the ball goes down the middle. A heel down the middle is the zone. Um, the brain actually purposely uh, countered at the top of your backswing a mistake you made at address and it, it healed it to get it down the middle, or it towed it to get it down the middle, 
or it hit it pure, but it hit a little right, or it hit it pure, it hit a little left. And I call that the zone, uh, because that's still you performing your um, normal skills at a normal energy level, but the super zone is the same exact skill with serotonin, a neurotransmitter added to the equation. That's all it is. Okay, so if you could just wait for this stuff to um, be used by your brain, serotonin, and you didn't change your thoughts on, on your mechanics or anything, you just kept playing at a mediocre level, all of a sudden you'll see, and it has happened to you, sometimes on the third hole, sometimes on the sixth hole, sometimes on the ninth hole, sometimes on the tenth hole, sometimes on the seventeenth, sometimes on the first. It can come at any time. It just depends on how healthy you are. And when it comes, you can do no wrong, and then it goes away. The super zone, that is. Is there something that we can do before we start a round? Yes, there's some practical things in it. And, and let me just um, make the statement first about the super zone so it makes sense. Okay, but we're going to come back to I, w I want to drill. I want to I yeah, something. Come back to the drill right now. Okay. Understand that it exists. It does exist. Understand it, what it is. It's just basically a high energy state. It's all it is. And I believe it's serotonin. And then wait for it. It is coming when the brain will release the serotonin supplies. And when it comes, there are practical things you can do to stretch it out. So understand it, wait for it, stretch it out with some practical drills that I've developed over time. And then you have to heal from it. For instance, Phil Mickelson. May I go that way, Fred? Sure, but I don't want to lose. I mean, I, I know this is not an infomercial, and, no, and you're no, going to no, tease no. us and make us. But I really want to get some juice here. I want some meat. Here's the drills. Okay. The first practical drill: if you believe it is serotonin, which has to be supplied through tryptophan, food from the outside, you have to eat certain foods to, to build back up the neurotransmitter serotonin. Then the first practical thing to do is to eat foods. I mean, eat a balanced diet. I'm not saying that. I always eat a balanced diet. But add to that equation uh, foods rich in tryptophan. That's the first drill I teach all my students. I call it sip and nibble. It was created for me in the year 2000. I've used it ever since. It's very highly effective. You sip water and you nibble on some protein, carbs, fat, sugar combination, especially tryptophan-rich foods. So here's the first drill. Um, and you need to get foods, and I call it the, uh, there's actually probably 12 really uh, known rich foods right now with tryptophan in them. But here's the big eight that I use heavily, um, and I have an acronym for them, but I'll just give you a quickie. Uh, peanut butter, so get peanut butter, if you, if you like peanut butter, get peanut butter in that uh, sip and nibble diet. We like to have our students sipping and nibbling between every shot so they keep resupplying the serotonin levels. So peanut butter is uh, one if you want. And some combo here when I start talking. Peanuts is another one. And a lot of people are allergic to peanuts, or some people are, so that, that wouldn't be a good thing for them. Right. But peanut butter, peanuts, mm -hmm. almonds are really high in tryptophan, uh, cottage cheese. I don't like cottage cheese. It's not in my uh, diet. It's not my sip and nibble diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's tough on the golf course. Tur yeah, I don't, bring, I, don't, I don't like cottage cheese. Some people don't like peanuts. I mean, you know. It yeah. doesn't matter. These are foods that are rich. Okay. Here's another one, turkey. The, the greatest one, and I don't know why for me personally, tuna. This one I can shoot some low rounds off of. Really? I, yeah, I've experimented with it. And of the eight that I, or the 12 uh, foods that have tryptophan rich at this moment that I know about, uh, tuna for me is number one. Uh, the next one is um, shellfish and soy food. And then bananas and broccoli uh, supposedly have high, and I eat a lot of bananas anyways, but uh, they have a high tryptophan-rich, uh, but, but those, there's only, only tryptophan-rich foods can resupply the serotonin level. Serotonin is, is made by the body, but it has to have tryptophan in it. And you can't, from what I understand, I've tried it, you can't get, go down to the store and buy tryptophan, you know, in the little bottles, the pills. For some reason, it doesn't work as well, and um, the natural foods have it in there. And that's the first draw. I call it sip and nibble, <laughs> good or bad. I'm famous for it yeah, but wait a minute, in this Jim. area. So go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. Uh, tryptophan. Tryptophan. Don't you also feel more tired after you eat a turkey sandwich? 
I know that people, you know, turkey sandwich, you come back to work and you're like... Mm, well, that's that. because you have white bread in there, white flour and the white sugar out of that. Mm. See, if you would nibble on good things, you would not get tired. You put sugar at any high level or white flour or grease... And, you know, I eat those things still, but I counter with lots of tryptophan foods. But, so um, a wheat bread? Wheat's great. Okay, you know, it's interesting because I know that if I grab a sandwich <clears throat> at the turn and say I, I'll, <clears throat> my three choices, a hot dog, a turkey sandwich, or a tuna sandwich. Good. Um, I'll, I'll first go for a tuna sandwich. Second, I'll go for a turkey sandwich. And sometimes I'll have a hot dog. I love hot dogs. Yeah. Um, but my performance always, and I'm just in, in reflection right now, my performance is always the, the lowest off of a hot dog. Yeah, because there's not really, well, one, uh, turkey and tuna are high-powered uh, super zone food in my model. A hot dog is just a fun food. There's nothing in it. I mean, they could put <laughs> turkey dogs. I mean, that would work. I remember going to a baseball game with a friend once, and he ordered a hot dog, and I said, wait a minute, I thought you were a vegetarian. And he said, there's no meat in hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so that's one of the first practical drills I really, that's really get my people on, because if they can get their, if they can get into a habit of, and it's hard, and, and that was the um, thing that I came to the 21st century at Cypress Ridge when I was there as a director of instruction. I had nutritionists around me, and I said, we got a problem. We got a blood sugar rising and falling at the turn. Why? So that so I had a guy uh, uh, in the area, trainer, uh, nutritionist, and he studied our sport. And he wasn't a golfer. And he goes, "Oh my gosh, you guys in your sport eat when you're hungry, you drink when you're thirsty, and you guys have the worst diets I've ever seen. You eat at the turn." And he goes, "You build up this white flour, white sugar. Uh, you drink cokes at the turn, and you build it up, and it's you got all this pumped." unnatural energy, which is zapping serotonin, by the way. Zaps all your good stuff, so for two holes you play well. And then it, then you have no, no serotonin left, so you drop at low levels. All the blood drops, everything, and then you play bad. Of course you're going to play bad. And he goes, Jim, you need to sip and nibble protein, carbs, fat, sugar, water between every shot. I said, what? Every shot i got to sip and nibble something? He goes, yeah, you want to bring your blood sugar levels to an uh, equal to a, a level. You want to keep them constant. And he wasn't even talking about serotonin yet. We didn't even discover that part of the equation until later. And um, he was brilliant. It was brilliant. This is brilliant. really interesting. It was so brilliant. And, and I use it, and all my, all my dedicated students are into it. And they, I ask them, this is the, the, the key test. I go, after three rounds of sip and nibble, and in my golf schools at three days, I hammer this. So you, it's like I'm a trainer for three days helping you with sip and nibble. Because I want, at the end of that three days, I want you energized, okay? I don't want you tired from the golf school. All your serotonin levels go down. So what happens is I go, basically, typically, I'll say, well, um, take the sip and nibble out of the equation. No way, Jim. No way. After three days, they get it. Usually, three days, they get it. And they'll say things like, well, God, what about bloating and stuff? And I go, well, then you're eating too much in between. You're sipping and nibbling too much. And then they got to come up with their own diets in between shots. And then you're chugging and gouging. And some people, well, it's crazy. You know? It's not sip and nibble, it's chugging and gouging. You know? And it's at your rate, and the brain knows how much to take in. It knows how much serotonin and energy it used to hit that last shot. It knows you don't. You don't know. You can't regulate it. It knows exactly the amount of water it just used to hit that great shot. It knows how much serotonin. It knows how many cells moved. It has it all tracked. You don't know, so that's why you've got to do something to counter this energy loss after every shot. Now, here's another practical thing, second practical thing. Um, most, so in my theory, if you've already hit good shots and you already have the mechanics and you already know how to hit a shot but you can't repeat it, then that means that you're probably at a low energy state Let's say that you came in the morning to hit. Do you always hit range balls before you play, Fred? Try to. Yeah. So how many range balls do you hit? I try to do a small bucket. Okay, here's the practical list of sip and nibble. Do you ever think about replenishing what you lost on the driving range? No. Of course not. We, we're not taught that way. So my students, some of them don't even hit range balls. They just, I have a warm-up system. 
Okay, why? Because every time you hit a great range ball, you zap high levels of serotonin. Hmm. Why do you think you hit it great? <laughs> There's only one reason. It's from high energy. Because you're hitting it off of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pla you're eating the plastic. No, it's about your serotonin. So let's say you have 40 great shots on the range. Some people do, you know, and they get to the first team, they don't have any, they can't hit the ball anymore. Yeah. Of course not. You didn't lose your skill. It's still on a neuron stored in your computer. You lost your energy on that driving range. So all I'm saying is go ahead and hit range balls before you warm up. But your goal is to replenish between the range and the first tee is to replenish what you lost. And you lost a lot of energy. You better sip and nibble till you get to that first tee. And so those are two practical things on how to stay in the super zone. I know it seems like, God, that's not very much, Jim, but it is the whole foundation of how we feel every day, don't you agree? How we, I mean, how we feel in the morning makes or breaks our days. So how you feel energy-wise will make or break your golf round. Unbelievable. So let's just talk about uh, a handful of peanuts in between each shot. Uh, you see uh, guys uh, do and women do different things. Two I peanuts, a, a, some put peanut a butter on nuts a piece together. of Yeah, put peanuts and almonds together and other walnuts because those, those have different kinds of good oils in them. So is trail mix a good trail thing? Trail mix is a great thing. Okay. Um, there's some. Uh, I like uh, Cliff bars. They have, even though it's artificial, that's an al alternative way to do it. The bars, if you can find a good bar yeah, that you like, um, some people like to do it that way. <laughs> I, I do it. That's an emergency way. If I don't have anything, I'll use a, a, a Cliff bar or a Balance bar or one of the bars that are good on the market, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to do it. I'll bring in my um, typical round of golf for me. It's a custom fit for me, and I and I say that you got to do the foods you like. Um, I'll do uh, my best. When I want to play my best, I'll have um, usually, if I can get it and prepare it the night before, I'll have uh, a sandwich for me. I need a, a tuna sandwich per nine, and I need about, on a normal 90-degree, 85-degree temperature, I need about two bottles of water per nine. Jim, what about Gatorade? I love having Gatorade when it's really hot outside. Gatorade's great, but it has sugar in it. So okay. the problem with Gatorade is, and I like Gatorade too, is that you better sip it, not guzzle it, and you better sip it the entire nine. It better not go away mm. because it, it'll be a blood sugar problem again, and it'll ruin your super zone for sure. You might come up, just like the sandwich. Sugar is the danger of the whole thing. Just like the sandwich, if you get too high sugar levels, You'll pull sugar pulls serotonin out, so that's why you feel so good. The serotonin is flowing, and so it'll pull the sh serotonin. You'll feel good for a little, while, and it zaps it all, and then you go to sleep. So so will Gatorade if you drink the whole bottle. Um, it might replenish the potassium and all that, but it has sugar. It has an opposite it has sugar in there. So I when I drink the uh, Gatorade, I make sure I drink it. I sip it between shots, and don't guzzle it. I'd rather guzzle water down because it has no sugar in it. It can't affect me. Unless I blow, it can't affect me uh, blood sugar-wise, and it can't zap the uh, serotonin. So I would rather have Gatorade in the cart or when I'm walking, plus a bottle of water. And if I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink the water, but if I just want that sugary taste, I'll just sip that Gatorade all the way through the nine, okay, <laughs> so that I regulate my the, the sugar level. And you'll see a change in your game. If you sip the nibble, what I tell you to do, come up with your own diet in between shots and didn't eat at the turn. I know. If you want to eat at the turn, that's fine, but take the sandwich and nibble it all the way to the 18th hole, okay? Instead of wolfing it. Instead of wolfing it down, especially if it's white uh, flour, white uh, bread, okay, or something greasy or the hot dog. Well, that's what I love about a banana is you can... You can do a whole banana in no time at all and not have to drag it around with you. And, yeah, exactly, and you won't have the blood sugar rise and fall. Right. But, um, yeah, so those are, I, I think that's the simplest drill in the, to get to the super zone and maintain it uh -huh. is to sip and nibble constantly. So that stretches the super zone out a little bit and doesn't let the blood sugar kill your game, the rise and fall. That's the number one drill is to learn how to eat properly as a golfer. And that's all he was telling me, this nutritionist was saying, you guys don't eat properly. For instance, we eat when we're hungry and we drink when we're thirsty. I said, what? I mean, that blew me out the water. Why not? Are we supposed to? And he goes, well, the problem is that 
as I started studying this and learning more, the problem is is that the food you eat now, the good food and the water, and as we get older, it gets tougher and tougher to get that food to work for you faster and faster. So, um, right, like right now for me, if I eat something good and I drink some water, it probably is not going to help me. It's not going to get through my system and be usable by my brain for about 20 minutes or two holes. So it's a vicious cycle. You never, ever catch up. So that's why we sip and nibble. And I tell my students, the dedicated ones are sipping and nibbling out of the house right in the morning. And uh, it's a pretty highly effective diet. And uh, they feel really good at the end of the round. And, um, you know, they're still able to eat dinner. And, and uh, not, maybe not as much. Um, but, you know, regulate it. I think so. If you want to get, understand there's a super zone, wait for it. Um, in a practical way, sip and nibble with good food and water. If you can, uh, if you have to eat bad food, just nibble it. Don't guzzle it down. Don't chunk it down. And then when the super zone appears and you hit those good shots, keep sipping and nibbling. Um, don't stop the process. And I, I believe you'll see more of those great shots stay together more often. And you will. And there's no doubt about it. If you're healthy, you're going to do great things. Jim, it's, it's so interesting to me because in all the time that I've been talking to golf professionals, and just being out on the course and talking to golfers, nobody has ever put a correlation between nutrition and a round of golf to me. At least not this way. Maybe not the explanation of it. It, it just makes so much sense, and it's so simple. It's simple. It's, but, it, but, but Fred, honestly, um, it is a very, without a trainer there, without a guy like me who believes in it, without somebody there pushing you for a, for a couple days. Because people, even my greatest students, forget sometimes. They get the old default habits. They, they eat the old way. Okay? So you need a push. I mean, it, it's easier said than done. Okay? Once, now this is what happens. Once you buy into this model and it works, the moment you get lazy is the moment the model won't work. And guess what you're going to do if nobody's pushing you? If you don't have me in your ear on a podcast like you're doing for me right now, or you're at my, one of my golf schools, or it's somebody who believes in it, a nutritionist, um, you're going to say something's wrong with my game, and then you're going to go and look. This, you're going to look for the latest gadget. You're going to look for new clubs. You're going to look for um, – and those eventually are the right things to do, but not in this state. So I'm just letting you know this is easier talked about than done because I've been at this for five years working my model around it, and I, I, I keep catching people out of position, my best people. This is the drill I do at home. I try to sip and nibble throughout the day. I don't even care about, my, I, I'll eat a little breakfast, maybe a big one, then I'll sip and nibble at whatever rate I feel like, a little bit of a lunch, sip and nibble, sip and nibble, and then whatever dinner, whatever's left. I mean, I just go by my appetite, and you'll see an energy change. Find the sip and nibble rate that, that's right for you. Find the right foods that you like. Get the tryptophan-rich foods in there. Keep water in the equation. And just for one day, take, the, um, take sugar out of the equation, okay? Take the, the white sugar and the white flour out just for one day, away from golf, and prove it out at home that it works. Then you'll buy in. Then you'll know. Or at work. Like you said, have a trail mix, but have a lot of it ready. Um, different people have done different things in the last five years, so I've got a lot of, I got a lot of cool custom fit techniques to help different people. So it's exciting. Um, it's changed my health, and uh, it's changed the health of my game and a lot of my students. That's awesome. Uh, two sources that your readers can, uh, or your listeners, and you, if you wanted to, to do some homework. Please, uh, Doctor Diane Schwartz by, and I've never met her. Uh, but I've read all her books. Okay. I got an email back from her one day. I was super pumped. Diane, say it again. Diane, Diane Schwartzbein is yeah. one of my heroes. I want to meet her. And I've read her theories, uh, her three books, The Schwartzbein Principle. And once I figured out that there was a super zone, I needed a nutritionist that I could actually explain 
what was really going on, and she's the first one ever. I've read a lot. She's the one that really gave me the, the clear explanation of the serotonin. And I haven't even met her yet, Fred. Uh, and to, but I uh, live by her theories. They're, they're just fantastic. Okay, it's um, Dr. Diana, D-I-A-N-A. Yeah, Schwartzbein. Schwartzbein, S-W-A-R-T-Z-B-E-I-N. There you go. There it is, yeah. Okay. I don't have her book in front of me, but I have all three books. And yeah, she's well, got a great website. She has uh, videos on her website, and, and it'd be great to get her on a, a podcast. Um, she, it's hard to get an appointment with her. She's in Santa Barbara. I live in Santa Maria up north. But some, some, one of my students was her um, was being um, was one of her uh, patients. That's how I know about her. Uh-huh. And, and they pushed me towards her to read her books, and it matched up with my model. Uh, and she's the reason I know a lot about the brain and serotonin, why I built my model around serotonin is because of her. And then Oasis is a new company that I've just been um, introduced to, and they match up with Schwartzbein's, theory, Schwartzbein's theories. Awesome. Oasis is the company. So those are two sources to just check in and get information about what's going on with the food equation and the brain and the super zone. And they don't call it super zone. I do. But they give you pieces of the puzzle. Okay? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Jim, thanks so much for your time and these amazing tips. I hope that uh, if people start using this and if they see a difference, let us know. Write yes. to me. Send, send something to golfsmarter at uh, ttour.com and let us know if you feel this is hooey or if it's worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if it's hooey, I'll send it to Jim. And if That's it works right. for you, I'll mm-hmm. still send it to Jim. Perfect. And check him out again at jimdelobby.com. Jim, thanks so much for your time, buddy. Thanks a lot. 